Mulligan and welcome to GardenWise Adventures. I'm Malie and I am here at the Conservation Garden Park in Jordan. Uh, I said it wrong last time, South Jordan. But anyway, at this point, as you probably saw from our last video, we're going to start concentrating more on water-wise landscapes. Now, when you hear the word water-wise landscapes, I know it scares some people. You start thinking of rocks, you start thinking of cactus, or just, you know, wide open areas. So I would love to show you that you can be water-wise, conserve water, and still have gorgeous landscapes. So you did see our, hopefully you saw our video, if not, I will be linking that at the end, about local scapes. And uh, they, kind of featured a wonderful way of designing a landscape that is water-wise. And so for today's plant of the week, I'm actually for the plant of the weeks from now on, I will throw in some more edible plants, but I would like to start concentrating on gorgeous plants that are water-wise, that you can put in your yard. Um, they work mostly on the, uh, in the Intermountain West, uh, zones five through, let's say, eight or nine. And they can, you know, once they're established, can do with a lot less water. Well, the first one I want to focus on is called Tiger's Eye Sumac. Now, sumacs have a bad reputation of being spreaders. The Tiger's Eye Sumac does spread a little bit, but in the areas that I've seen it, it doesn't spread as bad as the regular sumac. The thing that I love about them is the fall color and, you know, the texture that they bring to the landscape. So those, they are a gorgeous plant. And let me show you. Uh, up close a little bit, you know, a couple of the tiger's eye sumacs that they have here at the Conservation Garden Park. So here we have a newly planted tiger's eye sumac. I think it was planted this season. If you look at the color, the color is just stunning. The leaves are a little chartreuse, they have the pink, and then in the fall they turn this brilliant scarlet or orange. I don't know exactly what the color is. But it has actually a lot of different colors, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And it is Tiger's Eye Sumac, or Ruse uh, Typhinia Bale Tiger. I hope that's how you pronounce it. So let's go look at a larger specimen. Now here we have a little larger specimen. Still got the gorgeous color. Um, and this is about as big as they get. Tiger's Eye Sumac will get six to eight feet tall and about as wide. And they do send up new shoots, but they don't send them up very far from the mother plant. So you're not going to get the wild and really spread that you get with most sumacs. They can tolerate clay, alkaline soil. They can take a little bit of shade. They, can, they thrive in full sun. And they are very drought tolerant when they're uh, fully established. So they make a a magnificent addition to the landscape and just imagine this surrounded by you know something blue maybe like a, you know a blue catmint or maybe some periopteris you know the uh, blue mistra it would be an absolutely gorgeous addition to a landscape it's drought tolerant yet it doesn't look like you're out in the middle of desert with no texture and color speaking of texture see if I could take one of these leaves. I hope they don't mind me taking a little piece of this leaf. But if you look, I don't know if you can see the texture in the leaf. It is absolutely gorgeous. With the color and the texture, you have a magnificent landscape plant. If you have any questions about Tiger's Eye Sumacs or if you've grown them, let me know. And I hope you have a wonderful garden adventure and go look for new water-wise plants that you can put in your yard that are gorgeous yet drought.